All right. Uh, welcome once again to the Youth Ministry course. Uh, thank you all for joining. I hope you all are doing well. Uh, good to see you. Um, let's quickly pray and we'll get started. Father, we thank you for this time uh, where we, where we honor you. We want to say we are privileged to learn from your word um, just, just so we can be effective, uh, faithful leaders, pastors. Um, of the call that you've placed over our lives, Lord. Uh, Holy Spirit, minister to us, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Great, okay, thank you. Uh, I hope you all are doing well. Um, life is all good. Uh, uh, let's continue from where we left off. We've covered, uh, till chapter four, uh, it's the, till the organizational aspect of youth ministry. I think in the, uh, in, to the, week before the last week uh, we kind of looked at quite extensively uh, or in detail I should say uh, the importance of the organizational aspect of youth ministry uh, right um, how to plan uh, the number of different teams involved and the importance of having a core team uh, from the role of the senior pastor to the role of the youth pastor and the expectations and the commitments expected of a core team members, um, right? And all of that is what we kind of looked at. Um, but just to quickly run through from what we saw from the first class is uh, we try to understand who the youth are. Uh, you know, the world gives, uh, put the youth in uh, different uh, age categories. Um, we kind of, uh, came into agreement. Um, I, mean, I think it depends on the demography and also uh, the country that you're in and how, um, what age group is considered as the youth. And, and that's all fine, it's okay. Um, right? But then we saw the importance of uh, uh, youth ministry in the church. Why should there be a youth ministry in the church? And most of you said that they are the next generation, leaders of the next generation, etc. cetera. Um, but we also saw that the importance the Bible uh, talks about uh, impacting or teaching the word of God to the next generation, um, right? So we saw all of that. And now we are in a chapter five. Um, so that is uh, where we're at at the moment. Uh, and so here we look at a few challenges. Uh, this chapter is titled Challenges in Youth Ministry. Now, uh, in this chapter, we're going to look at uh, the challenges a youth minister faces and um, the youth are facing as well. Okay, so we are looking, we're going to look at two different perspectives. Okay, so um, ministry uh, is challenging. Uh, if you don't know about that, uh, let me wake you up to reality. Uh, <laughs> ministry is challenging to leaders, pastors, uh, etc. But when it comes to uh, the context, our context, and this is based on my observation, okay, um, some of the challenges, uh, that I faced, that I kind of put myself through, and also I have observed from having conversation with many uh, youth pastors and leaders. Uh, the first uh, challenge that a, a youth leader or a youth pastor uh, faces in a ministry when they are new to ministry or is uh, impatience. Um, impatience. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so, and, I, and it is understandable, right? Uh, so what that means is, uh, you, you know, you're coming in, you're just being uh, appointed as a youth pastor or a pastor, uh, you know, whatever, and uh, and you and you want you want to come in with all guns blazing. It's like, yes, I'm going to change everything. I'm going to change the world from day one, uh, and. You know, so uh, you want all the changes to happen yesterday. Uh, <laughs> so, but what that and what I and I'm again very thankful that uh, I was uh, I'm thankful to so many other leaders in my life, um, mentors, pastors, um, who've taught me the importance of being patient uh, in ministry and through the changes, uh, right? Uh, uh, so, one of the things that I learned was uh, to look at 
a youth ministry. Okay, I'm intentionally using youth ministry because this is the course that we are studying, but and I'm pretty sure the principles apply to every other aspect of ministry. Uh, it's very important that as leaders, that we look at youth ministry as a marathon and not a 100 meter dash. Now, uh, I'm not sure how many of you are athletes or took part in athletics in uh, during your school days or college. Um, any athletes, by the way? A part of any runners? Like, no, 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 Pastor, I was not a runner. Long jump, high jump, relay, 100 meter dash, uh, 200 meter dash. Anyone? No one was part of athletics? I was, but uh, I'm one of those people who literally hate the word patience. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> age is teaching me. I used to go for 100 meters. Right. Yeah. That's awesome, Collins. Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, I mean, the, thanks for sharing that. I, I was also a, a hundred meter dash sprinter in school and in college. Um, is so what's a hundred meter dash is just hundred meters. Uh, you know, whoever runs a uh, hundred meters, and, and um, I think Usain Bolt still has the world record for that. He's the fastest man to run a hundred meter dash, and I don't know what other records he has. Um, so there's a hundred meter dash and then there is a marathon right a marathon it can start with a minimum of five kilometers and then uh, i don't know the longest the longest i have heard <laughs> a marathon can be is 40 kilometers um that means uh they are running for 40 kilometers right and whoever comes first uh you know wins wins the the marathon um so why am i bringing that example or a parallel is an athlete uh, who is uh, who takes part or who's a uh, a sprinter trains very differently to a, an athlete uh, who is a marathon runner so a person who is a marathon runner uh, trains his or her body very differently uh, you know to get their lungs stronger they will uh, train in a higher altitude because the oxygen is less uh, they will push themselves to uh, you know just run and 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 run and and run and just so that their body gets used to uh, that uh, severe uh, you know pressure that you put uh, the body under with running like a 40 kilometers uh, or so um, and so and and similarly ministry we need to look at it that way um you know we need to build patience uh you know what happens is when we are impatient it usually results in a disappointment uh, or discouragement and you know you're coming in all guns blazing and you're not impa you're not patient uh you know to see through the seasons of changes, slowly introduce uh, changes one by one uh, and whatnot. But because you don't see the changes happening or you don't see the culture that you want to create happen, uh, you know, uh, it's, a, what, what tends to happen is you get disappointed, you get worn out, you get discouraged, and you, we start going into a complaint zone and saying, okay, the senior pastor does not, uh, doesn't understand my vision. Oh, man, the core team doesn't understand my vision. Nobody understands the vision. Nobody understands the culture that I want to set. Um, and all of this will happen in within one week <laughs> or a month, you know? Uh, some of us think, okay, I've been a worship, you know, youth pastor for a month, and that is enough for me to be patient. No, no, no. Uh, it doesn't happen that way. Uh, you know, I'll probably share a, a beautiful uh, a book. Uh, it's it's by Doug Fields called "The First Two Years in Youth Ministry," uh, and and that book has helped me a lot. And it's the two years is like the basic foundation uh, of of everything else that you will build on after 
And so it's calling us to be patient for two years and to just understand the culture, understand the vision, setting things right, communicating well, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And this is a very biblical in a sense that, you know, God just did not give the promised land to uh, the Israelites overnight. It was a gradual conquest. Right. They had to take one city at a time, one city at a time. They had to take one tribe of the Canaanites uh, at a time. Right. Uh, and so and it, it, that's how it is. Right. It's, it's uh, we have to be patient and, uh, you know, and in this journey, what it and what I have learned and what it does is it builds your character, um, it builds your integrity, it builds your passion, it really tests the waters, right? Okay, uh, uh, are you are you really zealous about this, right? Um, you know, one of the things that I believe in uh, at, as a worship pastor now at APC, um, you know, one of the things that I see with the young people in the team and also myself when I was younger is that if there was a new song out there that was released or launched, we want to do it immediately in church. Uh, right? Oh man, Michael W. Smith just released this. I'm talking about my day in age, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, early 2000s, mid 2000s. Uh, and if there was a song that Michael W. Smith would release, that's a song we're going to do in church. We're going to introduce it because he did it. Um, and nowadays we have uh, so many other teams and churches, worship teams, uh, you know, releasing songs on a regular basis and great songs. Um, and, you know, young people want to do that immediately. Uh, and I have a principle uh, call it the cool off period. Okay, so if there's a new song that a uh, you know Bethel Elevation, whatever Maverick, Hill song, you know, uh, they've launched it, they've released it. It's a great song, awesome. Let it cool off. Does that song still uh, stay around after all the hype of the launch and release? You know. Um, and if that song still hangs around, still lingers around after a month after it was released, or even a week after it is released, a week is still too short, but then, and, and that's what I like to call it as a cool off period is a month or two or even three months uh, to just see how the world has received that song uh, and and see if it's still applicable, uh, you know, if it's, if it's a good song, if it's powerful, it will linger around, it will stay around. And, and then we introduce it to the church. And so, uh, and that kind of tests their patience, you know, and it's what I call it as the cool off period. And so, uh, whatever plans that you have, it, it's okay that you don't have to come in all guns blazing and say, these are the changes I want to make. Be patient. Uh, you know, we have to run the race uh, with endurance, right? Uh, Hebrews says. Um, and so, endurance is a word that is associated with the marathon runners. Right, they have to endure. They have to run. They have to run. They have to run. They have to run and run. And it's the same thing with a Christian walk, isn't it? Our Christian life as a pastor, as a leader, especially, is um, we have a long way to go. We have a long way to go. What's the hurry? Right, we are here to stay. <laughs> right, we have a long way to go. Uh, and so, uh, what is important is that whatever we do uh, is to do it with uh, faithfulness, uh, with integrity and excellence, right? And being patient helps us. And I think this is one of the challenges that cripples um, most of the young pastors or young leaders. Uh, because of impatience, uh, they prematurely give up on ministry. Are you all with me? Uh, is this making sense? Yeah, do you agree or disagree? Okay. We are, we are. Uh, thank you, Collins. Right, so that's the first challenge, right? Um, I'm actually in the notes I've mentioned uh, my embarrassing uh, real life story uh, <laughs> uh, but but yeah I mean like I mentioned I was a sprinter in school and but then there was a time when they had a, a, like a five kilometer marathon guys just five kilometers you know 
Uh, and uh, and they said, okay, this race is going to come on the TV and all of that. There's going to be all this news channel going to capture us. And so I was right there in the front. There were like some hundred people, uh, you know, now who, who are participating in this marathon. And I was right in the front. And they said, on your mark, get set, go. I took off like a sprinter right in the front. And the camera caught me. And I was like, hey, okay. So 200 meters, I lasted 200 meters on a five kilometers marathon after that i ran out of gas you know i was like oh, oh gosh i think this is the wrong idea where's the water and i didn't even i did not even finish the race i did not finish the race and it was only five kilometers um, all because i did not i wasn't trained uh you know um to be a marathon runner and so uh, patience uh, relying on god waiting on him to lead you in ministry um, is going to give you the endurance uh you know to run this race faithfully okay all right uh, cool so that's the first challenge that uh, most of the leaders face the second challenge is time management time management is uh, one of the greatest challenge for most of the ministers pastors uh, youth pastors etc um why because uh 24 hours is not enough for us uh 24 hours is not enough that's one thing and uh and at least in indian culture um we don't like to say no or we don't know how to say no uh you know we want to say yes to everything any request everybody anybody asks it's like, okay hey uh roshan can you do this like sure i'll do that i'll be there at four o'clock okay uh, forgetting that i was I, having a meeting from 3 30 to 4. uh you know and uh and then uh, exactly you know there'll be another request hey roshan can you lead worship from six o'clock uh you know for a couple of hours all right forgetting you know that it's going to take time to travel from one place to another place and whatnot so time management uh begins uh by just uh you know learning to say no that's the first thing uh it's it's okay to say no uh you know set priorities right um set priorities because if you don't manage your time your time will be managed for you okay i'll say that again if you don't manage your time someone else or a group of people will manage your time for you uh, and so uh, it is very important that uh, you know you learn to manage your time uh, if you have to read a book uh, you know deep work by cal newport is one of um uh, it, it's a it's a good book uh, to read on how to prioritize prioritize your time and to stay focused on the task that is at hand right um you know what i i remember talking about this in worship ministry is as as a as a worship pastor um you know i'm 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 part of the pastoral team at apc i'm part of the uh, staff as well at apc right and so that means there's so many other teams there's the it team media team um what are the teams do we have accounts um uh, multiple teams right and they were there we all work out of one office and then obviously there are going to be interactions with other people and someone is going to randomly uh, going to ask for help isn't uh, hey uh, you know if you're free can you help me out with this uh, can we go down and bring this equipment up are you free or can you go this and get this done uh, you know an accounts team might require me to go get a check and whatnot so uh, as a as a good friend and and, and as a, as a good colleague, I should say, uh, it's uh, you know, it, I feel like okay, how do I say no to this person? If I say no, what if that person feels bad? You know, uh, and and there has been many instances like that where I have learned to say, I'm sorry, uh, I'm in the middle of something at this moment. And so what I'm doing there is I'm prioritizing my work, my task, because if I don't finish it, uh, I'm going to get a firing email from my boss. My boss is not going to be worried about, you know, he's not going, okay, if I tell him, the no, I had to help, 
uh, the accounts team to get a certain check. If I do that, both of us are going to be under fire because the boss is going to ask, okay, why did the accounts team ask you to go and do this? And why did you have to say it? And what matters to me is your work. Okay, so you see the ripple effect, so to speak. Okay, I'm not sure if I'm making sense, but uh, and so it's okay to say no. It's okay. It's very. It's as as much as as long as it is good to uh, you know help your colleagues. It is very important that you prioritize your work. It's not a selfish thing. It's just wise. Okay, so you prioritize your work. You get it done, and then you can you know think about solving world peace. <laughs> Okay, uh, and so uh, when I was the worship pastor and the youth pastor, um, you know, for four years, uh, the way I would approach uh, my day is the first half I would only focus on youth ministry. Um, guys, the as as pastors, the work really doesn't end. Okay, uh, the work doesn't end when you go back home at five p.m. You are going to get calls uh, for house visits. You, you you know all of that will be there, but this on paper. The way I would look at it is uh, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. I would focus on youth ministry and then from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. worship ministry just to get an understanding and idea. So uh, and then uh, after that, I'm a little flexible and whatnot. So this is the way I would manage time. And so I would encourage you to, uh, you know, manage your time really well. And the third challenge, uh, you know, that the youth min uh, ministers or pastors uh, face is discouragement. Discouragement, uh, constant discouragement. Okay, um, it, it could be abrupt. Uh, and the nature of discouragement is uh, abrupt. Uh, it could be, um, you know, it could be lack of respect from your team members or from your colleagues. Um, sleep deprivation because of a newborn baby. I have listed all these points because this is the phase, the season that I was in. Okay, uh, you know, uh, and the the list of points that caused me to be discouraged. Okay, lack of respect, uh, sleep deprivation. That time, Ethan was only eight months old, my firstborn. Uh, conflict and confrontation, uh, miscommunication and misunderstanding. Uh, too many calls and emails to return to. Uh, Criticism, constant criticism. Uh, is not, if, this is, I want to be clear that it's not constructive criticism, it is uh, destructive criticism. Uh, and then youth who are difficult to like, um, core team not cooperating, failure to please everyone, failure to please anyone. Uh, and uh, when you receive an email of disappointment uh, from whoever, from a parent or your boss, um, your colleague, et cetera, et cetera. Um, all of this is something that you will, you will have to face on a regular basis as a pastor. What are you guys thinking? I want to know. Is this all real? Uh, do you think it's real? Um, is Yes, no, maybe. OK, thank you. Has anyone uh, experienced any of these things, at least one of those points from the list of points that I mentioned? Which one's a little <laughs> All of it, huh? <laughs> yes, Collins, go ahead. Yes, Pastor, just like any other venture of leadership, it uh, we are not dealing with things as leaders we never deal with only things we deal with people and humans are uh, an advanced form of the animal kingdom if i may use that science word 
they their hearts involved they are thing there are so many things involved and as a leader our work is to first of all pass through all the evidences around in case of an issue and we keep our mouth shut mm -hmm. but um our mouth is open then we defend that decision to the last drop of our blood right so that's why we are so quiet especially me because you are just work you are just passing through landmines <laughs> as far as concerned thank you pastor yeah yeah thank you Collins. yeah um so all of this is very real isn't it um you know you know one day you're feeling like you're the best pastor in the whole world and the next day you're you're questioning yourself as if you're even having any impact in your ministry because you're discouraged right and so all of this is real um you know and uh and discouragement should not uh cause you to give up on ministry because uh learning um that it is part of it you know one one, one scripture that i'd like to refer to is in first samuel chapter 30 verse 5 i think um it and if you read about the life of david from first samuel chapter 17 onwards um, 16 you can throw in chapter 16 First Samuel chapter 16 to all the way to chapter 30 if you study about the life of David um, there are ups and downs and ups and downs right and time comes where Saul is a jealous of David he wants to kill David um, because he was jealous and David did not do anything wrong and um, and so and then David helps in saving a city a town and uh, eventually you know they become the mighty men of david uh, you know if the, the numbers grow to 400 or so but there comes a time when they are all attacked and and they blame david for that and they want to stone david the very person who saved them and it's it's all in those chapters 15 chapters you know it's it's wonderful when you go through the life of david in those 15 chapters um, and then this verse in First Samuel chapter thirty, verse five. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong. It says, "But David found his strength in the Lord." Right? David found his strength in the Lord, uh, and so it's very important that as we navigate discouragement, as we go through discouragement, that we find our strength in the Lord. Right? And that is the hope that we have, that He is our strength, that even though we walk through the darkest valley, He is with us. He will comfort me. Right? And, and though some of the darkest valleys in ministry can be very dark because you feel like you are all by yourself. Uh, you know, sometimes even your family won't understand you, uh, the challenges that you're experiencing or why you're discouraged. But in those darkest, in those loneliest times, uh, you know, uh, we need to realize that He is with us, and we need to find our strength in Him. Every great, uh, you know, Bible character that we know of experienced this, but they found their strength in the Lord. Um, right? Um, that's the spiritual aspect of it. But the practical aspect, what I would like to suggest, uh, encourage you guys, is um, find an experienced mentor. Uh, to uh, to nurture you, to nourish uh, you, to walk with you, right? Um, and I've just listed a few points on how you can find an experienced mentor because it is very important that you have someone uh, whom you are accountable to spiritually, right? Uh, and so pray about it. Uh, look for people inside and all outside the church. Look, ask certain questions like, okay, who inspires me? Uh, who encourages me? Who confronts and corrects and challenges me? Who do I respect? Um, and find someone, uh, you know, like that to be your mentor. It's very important, right? And uh, having a mentor in my life personally has helped me grow spiritually and be accountable as well, right? Another practical suggestion uh, uh, pointer is um, uh, have a hobby. Okay, uh, find a hobby, uh, whatever it is, uh, flying kites, <laughs> it's, it's okay, uh, whatever it is, uh, have a hobby. I think it's very important to have something outside of 
the ministry aspect and what we would normally do day in and day out and just to have something to take your mind off it and to just re, uh, you know to re, uh, rejuvenate yourself to do something uh, that you're not uh, thinking of what you've been doing all day right I'm not talking about uh, you know your quiet time or reading the Bible that is a given uh, you have to do that, uh, but I'm talking about a hobby, whatever it is, running, cycling, swimming, playing football, or cricket, whatever it is, you, uh, painting, um, etc, etc. Okay, so have a hobby and make a personal commitment to last. Okay, <clears throat> so that's the third uh, challenge is uh, discouragement. Uh, there is hope. God is our hope. Uh, let's find our strength in him and then another challenge uh, is communication <clears throat> uh, see because of miscommunication world wars have happened okay um, so communication is important to say the least right um, communication is more than passing along a verbal set of commands it's not just saying okay do this do this do this do that that's not uh, in that is part of communication but that alone is not communication right it is a skill in in corporate uh, it is considered uh, to be a skill and rightly so right a good communication is a skill uh, communicating with your senior pastor uh, you know keeping him updated on a weekly basis bi weekly basis on what's happening with the youth ministry it's important you uh, you know it, it, it's it is not a very good idea to not keep your to not keep your pastor updated on what's happening and in the ministry that you're leading right and also so now that's the one aspect of it remember um, there's also the, your other audience which is the youth young people that you're leading right so there is no such thing as too much communication with your core team um, or, or, or the youth in itself is if it's a culture that you're trying to set um, you know it's very important that you have multiple channel of communication like I've given a few examples like newsletters emails website updates uh, text messages social media etc etc uh, right so communicate often communicate clearly uh, and uh, if you think if you know that communication is your weakness uh, and to do something to get better at it uh, do a course uh, you know um, there's so many free courses that's available on how to get better at your communication um, so do that so for uh, that's another challenge and then um, intimacy with God um, you know we 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 do so much of God's work uh, in the name of God but we forget to give time to him right we get so busy doing his work uh, right um, from morning till evening and whatnot but we forget about our personal walk with God and this challenge is very real the number of pastors and leaders experience this Right, and so I want to encourage us uh, as we are leading people, as we are pastoring people, and no, uh, as much as long as, no matter how busy we can get, because it is possible that we can get very busy. Do not neglect your intimacy with God, your walk with Him. That is what's going to fuel you to uh, and 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 cause you to last. Right, see through all the discouragement and give you the wisdom to be patient. Okay, um, so those are all the challenges that uh, a, a leader faces. Um, uh, any questions so far, guys? Okay, because um, if there are no questions, we'd like to move on to the next section. We will look at some of the challenges that the youth uh, are facing in this day and age. Okay, um, right. so would you mind sharing or telling me what are some of the challenges that the youth face in this day and age, please?
Come on, guys. I'm sure we all have interactions with young people. So what, 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 are, what are some of the challenges that uh, you have observed that the youth are going through? What, what they face? Okay. Peer pressure. Yep. Peer pressure, technology usage. Okay. Mental health issues, yeah. <laughs> Inconsistency, okay. Uh, do you mind uh, uh, expanding on that point, Abu? Inconsistency, and uh, I think that. Sorry, Abu. I can't can't hear your voice very well. It's very faint and breaking. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, we can. Yes. Thank you. So, thank you, Pastor. So, in my area here, so the major problem that we are facing in terms of youth is inconsistency. We ask them to come to any program, even. Let me come to you, uh, sir. We want to start this program as we want us to, uh, to lead us, to guide us. So, when, you, when, we, when we, you're about to start or you are, your program is on, you see some of them that thought that uh, engineer the program, we just you know, see them. So, we just even you yourself that you want to carry them along, you'll be disappointed. Mm -hmm. Why well, you are the one that bring brought um, bring about this um, bring this idea, and I join you with the idea in order to don't, to build you up. But with time, you see them, you know, see them. They had uh, them to they will organize the prayer meeting. So out of eight, maybe eight of them organize the prayer meeting. On that day, that we need to pray, on that prayer day, you see two or three. So mm -hmm. the next one, you see another three. So the three that came in previous that come pre in the first in the first day, you know, appear on second day. So that is how we, we are facing the challenges here. So inconsistency, they, they don't consider, they don't. Mm, I don't know how to put it. I don't know what they are doing so they, if they start anything they will not continue doing it so uh, the i think that's a challenge uh, worldwide <laughs> uh in, in terms of getting consistent even consistent volunteers for that matter right yeah uh lack of guidance yes collins go ahead you see pasta I wanted to say something about consistency, lack of consistency. As a leader, when you really set with your team, you set rules and regulations to follow, mm -hmm. you become, after the rules have been set and discussed and then passed, mm -hmm. then a leader becomes a cat. A cat is a, one of the animals which literally does not respect the nature of the rat, whether it's pregnant, whether it is breastfeeding, whether it's young, it eats all cat, all rats that comes their way. So once the laws have been set, a leader should be blind to whosoever is involved, just to, you must administer the law. Once you straighten up the discipline in the team, then everything is going to be smooth. But when you start, say, using black holes on some and such and other people, that this one you know he explained it to me he didn't make it on time then you literally going to lose the whole bunch 
Thank you, sir. Okay, thanks, Collins. Yeah, I think so. We can uh, kind of agree that inconsistency or consistency is a challenge uh, among other things. So, uh, peer pressure, uh, as Zilatoli mentioned, is very real. In fact, we even did a um, a topical study on peer pressure. Um, if I'm looking at Bible examples and whatnot, technology usage it goes without saying. <laughs> uh, yeah, and mental health issues. Yeah. Um, so, you know, just to start off, uh, you know, by talking about it. Um, so while, while doing my own research on, on what are some of the main causes for mental health among young people um, in this day and age, in this generation, uh, two things stood out. Uh, two things was, uh, and I mean, I'm sure there are more now to the list, but one is the amount of choices the young people have uh, in this day and age, right? Uh, we'll just talk about that now. Um, now, in my day and age, at least not too long ago, at least just 15 years, 18 or yeah, okay, 20 years ago, uh, if I wanted to buy a bike, um, there were three options for me to choose from three good ones that like you know um, for a college student when I was a teenager or a, a, you know just a young young adult 19 year old um, that's when you know 2005 is when I got the bike there were <laughs> just three major bikes that was appealing to all the younger generation back then now I'm glad I don't have to pick a bike because there's like so many choices. Uh, it's overwhelming. Okay, uh, and so and there and the choices are overwhelming the younger generation. Uh, is okay, let's just do a quick check. Okay, uh, if I were to ask you guys this question, I, I want you to tell me which would be easier. Okay, I want you to pick. Uh, I want you to pick five best. Uh, five best shampoos. Okay, I don't know why it's shampoo. It's okay. I want you to pick five best shampoos. Uh, and here's the thing: choice one. I want you to pick five out of five hundred shampoos, or and the second option is pick five best shampoos out of the ten shampoos. Which is likely to be less stressful? Right, uh, I, I would say you know picking five best shampoos out of the ten is going to be less stressful, okay, versus five hundred because it's just too much information to process, uh, time consuming, right, um, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so that's a kind of a similar situation that the young people are in these days. Okay, uh, what do I do? And I've just put an image there. It says, okay, do I become an entrepreneur or employee? Uh, which career path do I choose? Which college do I go to? Etc. Uh, um, Etc. Et and the young generation nowadays also have the luxury, actually, to take a year off, uh, and you know, and tell their parents, "I'm going to take a break. I'm going to find myself, go to the mountains, travel, and um, just, and then get inside." <laughs> if I said that to my parents, um, yeah, sure. You want to find yourself here? I found you. You know. Go do, uh, yeah. Um, so that's one of the leading causes, uh, uh, choices. That's uh, the number of choices that's there for the young people. Uh, that's leading to mental health. That's one of the challenges. And the other one is loneliness. Now, among peer pressure and among this technology and social media, um, you know, they might have, they might be connected, you know, virtually to hundreds if not thousands of people uh, but still feel lonely right uh, they could be standing in the crowd part of a crowd be, or be part of a group of 20 people 10 people uh, you know but still feel left out still feel lonely and so uh, because of that fear what happens because of the fear of being rejected 
you know, they begin to do things so that they can be uh, accepted by their peers, by their colleagues, right, uh, by their friends, etc. And so um, loneliness is real, and uh, happiness is portrayed is what is seen on social media. Um, right, um, a, an individual might be going through completely, uh, you know, something very dark, and uh, you know they might be experiencing all of these negative things. But on their social media page, uh, everything will look flawless, from their display picture to their constant uh, updates on WhatsApp status or Instagram status. Uh, WhatsApp status, <laughs> uh, Instagram status, uh, Facebook, etc., and and whatnot, right? And and what that causes is, for example, let's say um, a, an individual or a couple, for that matter. Let's take that. Um, you know, they're posting pictures that they are traveling the world. They're you know they're they're awesome and whatnot. And at the same time, there's another couple or another individual who's looking at who's following uh, their profile and seeing, okay, you know, wow, look at their life. It's so amazing. You know, that they, they get to travel, they're having fun, they're having the best food because of all the food pictures they're posting. I don't understand. But, uh, yeah, and they have, and they feel the need to tell the world, let the world know that which airport they are in and, uh, you know, how many people are there in the airport. And which flight they are taking, you know. And so all of this information is out there. And then this person who's uh, who's feeling lonely and broken and experiencing all this, uh, you know, say depression or whatnot, um, they constantly feel more depressed because they're comparing their life to the others because of social media. Uh, um, are you following? So these are all very real challenges, um, right? Um, so mental health. Uh, loneliness, um, their barometer of happiness, um, etc., and then also time. Um, there's a list of challenges that I've mentioned. Yeah, but uh, time, 24 hours is not enough. Uh, young people are very, very busy these days. Um, you know, it, I think it it starts off from them being. Uh, I mean, even parents these days. When you look at children, uh, they want to. Again, I'm sorry. I'm constantly comparing uh, my childhood to this day and age because um, you know I grew up in the '90s. The '90s absolutely rocked. It was the best time to grow up. Okay, you had the best worlds of both. You know, go out, play in the sand, play marbles, get fall down, get hurt, uh, etc. And also at the same time, we had the introduction of uh, video games and all of that. Right? Um, that was what summer vacation was for during my time but now summer vacation okay dance class after dance class swimming class okay after swimming class okay uh, what football class coaching after that badminton coaching after that uh, whatnot and so uh, parents feel that 24 hours is not enough and then because of what has been instilled into the child as they grow up into a teenager and a youth now they think that okay that's, that is not enough. They need to do more. They constantly need to be doing more. And so, and which is why uh, results, uh, you know, it's very hard to uh, getting young people to youth meetings nowadays, I would say, is because they see that, okay, is that really worth it for me to go? Because I could give that one hour for all the other things that I want to do. So if I if I'm going to give my one hour to this youth meeting, is it really worth it? Because I don't have the time. That's the question young people are asking, and that's a very real challenge. Okay, I just realized that uh, the time's up. We'll uh, take a quick break and uh, we'll continue. Okay. All right. See you in a bit. <laughs> 